So in the last lesson, I was talking about what a major scale was. And in the lessons before that, I talked about major, minor, sus chords, power chords, and then what the root note was. Um, so now I'm going to make a little bit more advanced. And after you know about those chords, the next chords you really want to know about are called seven chords. Uh, so it's kind of like a family of chords. Some musicians talk about seven chords as kind of a group. And there's four types of seven chords, but there's only three that are really common. Um, so I'm only going to talk about the three common ones. The fourth one, I'll mention it now, but I never use it. I mean, people, if you're doing jazz, you would probably use it, but I'm just going to talk about the three most common ones that I actually use and everyone I know uses, and you see them all over the place. So the first one is just seven. And the full name for that is actually dominant seven. But like when you're looking at a chord chart, you just see seven. The next one is major seven. You can either do it with a triangle. It means major seven. Or you can write M-A-J seven. So it's one or the other. Either the triangle seven or M-A-J seven. If you're looking at stuff online, you see M-A-J seven because there's no triangle. If you're looking in like fake books or real books for like jazz songs you'll see the triangle and then the other one that's really important is minor seven so you can either write that that little dash seven like a minus sign or you can write m seven because m means minor so one thing people get confused about is thinking m means major but it doesn't m means minor so let's talk about the dominant seven chord first um, so dominant seven chord so let's talk about the dominant seven chord the dominant seven chord and write out the full name is what you is when you see just the number seven after a chord name um, like probably the most common ones to run across or let's say G7, D7, A7, these are real common ones, E7, sometimes you see C7, for some reason it doesn't come up quite as often. There's that cage thing, which I could talk about at some point. Those are just the most common chord shapes. So uh, these ones come up the most when you're learning guitar. And these all, whenever you see that number seven, it's all talking about dominant seven chords. So, what that means, it's actually there's a single definition for what it means. It is one, three, five, seven. I'm sorry, one, three, five, flat seven. If it was a normal seven, it would be a major seven chord, which I'll talk about in a minute. So, one, three, it's like starts out like it's a major chord because that would be a major chord right there. One three five is a major chord, but flat seven is what makes it a dominant seven chord. And it's really like bluesy, like that flat seven. If you want to make bluesy music, you play like a major scale or major chord, and you add a flat seven in there. That's that's really what defines blues music. So let me draw out. An example, I'm going to use um, G major again to pretend this is the nut because this is the same chord I did, I was using as an example. So pretend this is the nut, pretend here's zero. I'm sorry, that wouldn't make sense. Zero. Here's the first fret. Two. Three. So a G chord looks like this. It has G. B, D, G, B, G. So imagine playing that, because most people know that. Some people like to play it with D right here. I'm not going to talk about that version of it. So there's a G chord, but then we have to replace those notes with scale tones. So we're starting out with this major chord. So here's the one, three, 
Remember, a major chord is 1, 3, 5, and then we have the 1 again, so there's another root note, or tonic, or... There's the 3, so I'm changing that B to a 3, and the 1. So now the question is, where's the flat 7? Because we want to turn this major chord. Right now, this is just... At this point, all we have is a G major chord. And I put square brackets, which is a lot of people do that as a habit around chords. So right now all we have is G, but we want to make um, we want to make a G dominant seven chord. So the question is, where's the flat seven? Well, the way you find it is you look at your root note and you go over two frets to the left. So the flat seven would be right there. So two frets to the left gives G7. And then there's other ways to do a G7 chord, but I'm not going to cover them right now. I just want to give this basic way. So there's G7. So two frets to the left. So that's a dominant 7 chord, um, which is bluesy sounding. You should definitely try this out. The next chord would be major 7. So instead of dominant 7, we'll do major 7. I'm just going to write over this because it's so similar. So instead of flat 7, I'm going to get rid of the flat sign. Probably should have done this chord first, but it doesn't matter. Music theory is kind of like, you got to see lots of examples of how things are kind of similar, but not quite similar. Um, so... The difference is, major 7, remember it has that triangle, major 7 uses the regular 7. So that note that I skipped right there, that actually would have been the regular 7. And again, these are all coming from the major scale, except the flat 7 actually is a flat, flatting the 7 of the major scale. That flat 7 is not in a major scale. That's why it has a flat in front of it. So now we have 1, 3, 5, 1. Now we have the 7. Um, so if you play that chord, which can be a little tricky to figure out how to do for if you're a beginner. Um, so in all these cases, we're not going to have this 1 here. I should have scribbled that out before. But we have that flat. We don't need the flat 7 anymore. So this chord's a little tricky to do. I actually have kind of a trick to play this chord because I really like G major 7. What I do is I don't play the 3 right here. I put my middle finger on the 1. My first finger on the 7 up here. And then sometimes I just mute out this 5. So I play... So what I do is I just play the... I play this guy, the 1, the 1, 3, and the 7. It sounds really nice. And then you can toggle it back and forth with the 1. So then the last chord type, I'm just going to have to clear the screen because it's getting pretty messy. So the last chord type is a minor 7. Now the reason why I had to clear the screen, not only because it was messy, but a minor 7 is a little bit harder to explain in relation to those other chords. So G minor 7 is kind of a... Well... It could be an interesting one to do. I don't think it's that many people really know how to even play G minor 7 unless you know some music theory or you've been playing guitar for a while. But let's just do it because it'll be a little more advanced and one way to learn music theory is to see stuff that's a little more advanced. So what we're trying to do is do a G minor 7. And remember you can either write it like that or you could see it like this. They mean the exact same thing. And I put square brackets around the chords. G minor 7, G minor 7. And remember the definition of a minor 7 is 1, one flat 3, actually I didn't cover this yet, 5, flat 7. So this is more like a minor chord because we have one three one flat three five, so that flat three is making a minor chord. 
And the flat seven um, is also part of like a minor scale. So now I need to draw in that G chord, but this time I'm just going to skip straight to the scale tones. So here's the the root note, which is on the third fret. So here's third, second, first, open. So there's the one. So we know the three is right there, but we need the flat three. So the flat three is actually going to be to the left. The flat three is always to the left of the three. So it's right there. And then we need a flat flat seven. So the other chord shape, so I mean it's a little more advanced. The other chord shape we could we put the flat seven up here. But this shape right here is like kind of a nightmare to use, so we're not gonna go that approach. Um, so what we're actually we're gonna do is we're gonna find the octave of this one. So this is an important concept. And again, this is again a little more advanced, but maybe it's good to see it. So here's the one. What we need to do though to get the flat seven is we need to find the octave of this one. So to find an octave, you go over two to the right. So over two frets, so this one, this one, and then we're gonna climb up two strings, and there's an octave right here of this note. So over two, up two gives you the octave. And the reason why we need to find that octave of this root note is so we can find the flat seven. And as we saw with the G dominant seven chord, what you do is you just go to the left two. So here would be the regular seven, which we don't want. We want flat seven. And this is a pretty useful and common way to play a minor seven chord. So it's right there. That's the shape. If you're paying attention, there's something weird about this, which is that we don't have the five. But the five is the sort of a lot of people consider it the most boring note of any definition of a chord. Um, so it's the first one to get dropped out. Because right there, that chord is much easier to play than trying to figure out how to cram this five in here. There's a five right there. Because the other five would be right here on the D string, but we can't use that one because we're using the flat seven there. So adding that 5 all of a sudden would make it much harder to play this chord because then you'd have to use your pinky on that and it would be just much more inconvenient. So most people would drop that out and just stick with that minor 7 shape because as long as you have the flat 7 is super important because if you didn't have the flat 7 you wouldn't know if you were playing um, Without the flat seven, if you had one flat three five, if you only had this, it would only be a minor chord. Or if you only had one flat three, it would be a minor chord. Because you can play one flat three and get a minor chord. So you have to have the flat seven. So we have to have that. Um, so that's it. And this shape is also cool. Partly I want to show a more advanced shape. This little guy is pretty cool because whenever there's no open strings involved in what you're doing, then you're free to move it around. You can horizontally you can move it this way. You actually can't move stuff like this on the guitar. You could move it up. You can, but you can't cross over the G, the G and the B string. So you can move stuff vertically, but you can't cross there because something happens with the tuning, um, which is kind of annoying, but you can't just move shapes vertically, but you could take this minor seven shape the one flat three flat seven and you can move it left to right as much as you want and actually it's one of the mo one of the more common ways and people also use this all the time on the starting on the fifth string so so they would move that minor seven shape around on the on the a d and g strings but you can't move it up to here you can't move it up to there because it would become a different chord and it wouldn't sound right so that's it. Definitely got more advanced than I thought, but that's kind of what happens with music theory. It usually gets kind of advanced quickly. All right, bye.